All right, here we're going to talk about nonlinear functions and their graphs. Here's a polynomial function in general. Notice the degree is the n, so that's the nth power is the, called the degree. And it could be um, a positive natural number. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, keep going, and that's the highest one. And then it goes down by 1 and down by 1, etc. For example, a polynomial might look like this. It has negative 3x to the 10th plus x to the 5th minus 3x squared minus 4. Okay, the highest power is 10, that's the degree of the polynomial, then it goes down, misses a few of them, right, x to the fifth, but it's in order. That's a polynomial. Now the leading coefficient is the negative 3 on the highest power. And then these a sub n, minus 1s, and etc. are just other coefficients on the variables in descending order power. Okay, now polynomials must have a natural number as their exponent, so it must be 10, 9, 7, 6, can't go negative, can't have negative 10, negative 5. That wouldn't be a polynomial then. And it can't have variables in the denominator or like square roots of variables, etc., to be a polynomial. So while we're talk talking about that, look right down here. This is not a polynomial because of this variable in the denominator. And this one is not a polynomial either for two reasons. It has a negative power and it has a square root of a variable. Remember, the square root of t means t to the one half. And that's not a natural positive number. Okay? Here's some examples of polynomials that are degree and leading coefficients. Here we have a second degree with a leading coefficient of 1, right? Third degree with a leading coefficient of negative 3. This one is just h of x equals 8. That's like y equals 8. It's a horizontal line, so it's just a constant number. So there is no degree. It would be like having x to the 0 power, but what's x to the 0? 1. So that would just be back to my 8. So that would be why this is a 0 degree with leading coefficient 8. And this is a 6th degree with leading coefficient 2 thirds. All right, now let's look at some what we call identifying extrema or extrema. Two graphs are shown here. On this graph, it goes up and up forever on both sides. On this one, it goes down and then up forever. Okay. Now, on this graph, we can actually see that there's an absolute minimum, right? There's a lowest point of this entire graph. So we call that an absolute minimum. And the absolute minimum is what is the lowest point right there. That lowest point is negative 3. So this parabola has an absolute minimum of negative 3. Now, also with having an absolute minimum, it has what we call an a, a local minimum. Okay. So local means right around your area. So think about in your neighborhood or something. But here's the lowest point, and right around your area, so this whole area right here, the lowest point is, again, negative 3. So when you're in a valley like that, that's automatically a local minimum. The, lo the absolute minimum means of the entire graph. See this entire graph, well, what's the minimum? So, and it's the y value all the time. So in this case, the absolute minimum is negative 3 and the local minimum is negative 3. There are no absolute or local maximums because they go on forever and ever. They never stop. Versus over here, look at this one, this hill. There is a local maximum right there at the top of the hill. Local, because just around this area, it is the highest portion, right? So we say local max. And that local max is 10.1. Now over here, there's a local minimum, right? Right around that area. And it's negative 2.09. So local minimum, 2.09, and it's negative. Now is there a maximum? No, this isn't the tallest portion. Portion. This isn't the lowest portion. So the tallest or highest portion or maximum goes on forever, and the minimum goes on forever. So there is no absolute for max or min in this case. Versus over here, this is the lowest, right? All right, so that's absolute minimum and maximums. So here kind of explains it again, what I just did and how, how to find them. So here's an ex another example. Goes on forever, goes on forever. If it goes on forever and ever up, there is no absolute max. Is there an absolute minimum? Yes, right there. So let's write that out. Absolute minimum, negative 1.9. All right, now let's go through and find the local minimums. Local minimums occur at the valleys. Local, so local minimum of 0, right? Um, another local minimum right there, negative a half. Are there any more local minimums? Yep, this is also a local minimum though, right? Negative 1.9. Okay, because right around that area. 
All right, now let's go for local maximums. We said there was no absolute, but there are local max, right? Right there, 0.7, and right there, 0. Notice that there's a local max at zero, of, of 0 and a local minimum of 0. That's okay. It's just where they happen to be. Okay? One more example, and I'll let you try one. All right, so this one's a little different. It doesn't go on forever, and it doesn't go on forever. Definite stopping points. This point is included, right? Solid. This point is not included. All right, so let's check. Is there an absolute maximum? Can you find the highest point of this graph? Well, it's kind of here, but it's not, right? It's infinitely close to this point. So unfortunately, that's not the highest point. We can't get up to that point. So there is no absolute maximum because it gets closer, infinitely closer. It's not defined exactly at negative 1.2, 3.78. So there is no absolute max. Is there an absolute minimum? Yes, there is, actually, because it's def defined right there at negative 5.23. So negative 5.23 is considered the absolute minimum. Now, the other question is, is this a local minimum? Now, remember, local minimums has to be around your neighborhood. So you've got to be able to look left and right or up and down. If I'm here at that end point, there is, I can look up. But I can't look down. There's nothing down here. So this would not be a local minimum in this case. There is a local minimum, though, right here. Because see, around your neighborhood, right, at the valley. So we have a local minimum at 3.71. And we have a local maximum, local maximum, at 1.63, right there. So to recap, absolute minimum, local maximum, local minimum, no absolute max. All right, here's one for you to try now. And what I'd do is I'd pause it and see if you can come up with the absolute maximum, the local maximums, absolute minimum, and local minimums. So pause it and do that, and then I'll do it right for you. OK, so let's go through this. And what's the absolute max? Is there one here? It's not defined, right? It is not defined at this. This means it goes on forever. So hopefully that didn't mess you up. I should have given you that, right? That means it goes on forever. So not defined here. So there is no maximum of the graph. Is there an absolute minimum? Well, this goes on forever. So it's not no absolute minimum. So this one, it keeps going down forever. This one, it stops at right there. But it doesn't quite get close enough to define at 1.1, 4.43. So no absolute max and no absolute min. OK, what about locals? Yep, there are some of those. Let's start with local max. Right there, right? 2.27. Uh, another one, 0.887. OK, and then minimums, negative 0.887 and negative 2.27. Right there. There they are. So there's two local max, two local mins and no absolutes in either case. Hope that helps.